All right, I think we've got enough in here now. I'm just going to go for it. I um, hope everybody is is well and, and staying healthy. Um, you know, here in Boston, we've had a pretty big uptick, and we've got a snowstorm hitting tomorrow. So daycare is already canceled. We're we're hunkered down pretty much through the holidays. So I think everyone at this point is really counting down the the days here till we get to the new year. And um, we're thankfully busy, and we're we're hoping for a really busy 2021 um, as well. Um, I've been speaking with our, our main lender contact recently who um, was covering everything that they're expecting to see in 2021. And in terms of um, greasing the wheels from an acquisition standpoint with um, you know, keeping availability to funding um, as, uh, as a real option in 2021, whether that's you know, increasing the, the backing on SBA loans or increasing the, the limits of the SBA loans and offering alternative forms of acquisition financing. Seems like all of that is gonna be uh, really hitting the gas into the new year. So looking forward to that and putting 2020 behind us. Um, these lunch and learns have been really great through all of this and we're gonna continue them into the new year. Um, feedback has been phenomenal. Um, we're, we're really excited about you know, honestly ramping these things up in, in 2021. We're going to have um, some announcements uh, along those lines coming up in the new year, and um, it's been it's been fun. It's been helpful. I, I think you know we get the questions every week on what we should be focusing on. So we haven't had one lunch and learn where we've really where we haven't been addressing your uh, your questions, your pain points. So I think you know I feel like it's been valuable according to the feedback it it has. So we're excited to keep doing this, and we're going to commit to that in the new year. Um, we do try to keep this valuable so short sweet takeaway points um we're going to be condensing a lot of these lunch and learn lessons into uh, more valuable tracks for you in the new year so that you can get the takeaway nuggets um as uh, basically educational streams so um, expect that coming down the pipe in in january um who am i why should you care i, I start off the, the webinar each week with this basically i run bn digital that's our agency uh for all things off market deal flow that's what we cover here on these calls, deal origination and social selling. That's our process for um, deal flow, for deal sourcing. And then um, I also run BizNexus. That's our, our tech platform for auction-based deal flow, broker rep deal flow. Between those two, a uh, pretty comprehensive solution for deal sourcing and deal origination. But what we cover here again is really the process that we use for off-market deal origination, social selling. So the goal is to build up a valuable network of your end target prospects, the business owners, whatever your niche might be, and all of the referral prospects that can help deliver those end prospects to you on an ongoing basis. So common ones are financial advisors, accountants, lawyers, niche consultants, so many niche consultants in this industry, really identifying who those referral prospects are, where are they, where are they hanging out, and how do you get in front of them, and how do you stay in front of them on an ongoing basis to make sure that as they have leads coming through, you're going to be top of mind and they're going to refer your, your end prospect, the business owner of interest to you. We have five stages that we go through um, on a weekly basis here. I'm not going to dig into these now, but we have five stages because I see deal origination as a long game. Um, you know, in this industry, we very often see people looking at deal origination as a short game. Um, give me leads, right? Give me X amount of leads and I'm going to test something out for six months. And if I don't get, you know, three engagements or, or one commission, then I'm going to move on to the, to the next vendor or the next process. We see a lot of disjointed marketing efforts at the top of the funnel. Um, and I think it's a mistake. I, I think all of your marketing efforts at the top of the funnel should be coordinated. Um, and we can go more into that, but really we, we talk about that on a, on a weekly basis. And you should really think about this as a long-term play because, um, that's, that's what it is. If you're pursuing multiple acquisitions as a private equity firm, or if you're an intermediary and you're going after multiple commissions and you have a territory, you want to make sure that you build up your ecosystem of end target prospects of business owners and your referral networks, and then stay in front of them on an ongoing basis so that your deal flow can accelerate over time. Um, the first at bat is more often than not, um, not going to, to be successful. So you need to make sure that you get in front of these prospects state your value proposition, and then have a systematic process in place for staying in front of them um, to nurture them down the funnel to get to the sit down, to get to the meeting. All of this, everything that we talk about each week, 
It's about getting the uh, proverbial engagement, whether that's a phone call, sit down, Zoom call, taking that online relationship that you've been developing and getting it offline to a real world engagement. The funnel that we go through, um, and you can think of the funnel as I use the analogy of, of a conference uh, back when we used to do those pre-COVID. If you're exchanging business cards at the top of the funnel, you're really just vetting people to see if you have enough in common uh, to see if it's worth exchanging a business card and following up with a phone call, um, getting to know each other about what each person does and how their solutions fit their fit each other's pain, pain points, um, et cetera, et cetera. That's the conversation that goes through the middle of the funnel down to the bottom of the funnel where we get that cup of coffee. So um, that's the overview. Updates for today. Um, we are going to be announcing a, a lot of, I want to say changes, but um, we're excited about it. Let's say tweaks to our whole process and, and what our offering is. That's going out live to the world tomorrow. Um, so if you're on our newsletter list, expect to see that. The whole walkthrough, sales deck, all the videos, everything that we're doing. And it's really tying everything together. So top of the funnel, mid to bottom of the funnel, biz nexus, BN digital. Um, so maybe we'll talk more about that next week, but just keep an eye out in your inbox. Tomorrow, we're gonna to be blasting that out. We've made some real improvements on the platform. We completely overhauled the matching algorithm. So if you're doing um, multiple searches, if you're working for private equity firm and, and you're doing multiple searches for multiple portfolio companies, or if you're an intermediary and you're out there doing buy side work for multiple clients, the algorithm has been taken to really the next level this week. So those matches should be spot on regardless of how many projects you have, companies you have, searches you have, everything should be um, pretty much 100% accurate for what you're, what you're looking for and what's being suggested. Uh, we've spent a lot of time on this. It's one of those things where, you know, to the outside world, you really don't notice it. You just know that, that it's working a lot better. But for us, it's something that we've really been digging into for a long time. So we're excited to release that. Um, one big thing that we will be announcing um, tomorrow as part of the package for any of our agency clients, we're basically flipping the switch to give you full access to the BizNexus platform. So everything up to the pro level. So what that means is you're getting the free advertising. Um, if you care about that, if you're, you know, if you're out there trying to promote your brand or promote your services or your boutique or your company, you're getting um, a free boosted profile. You're getting um, a free boosted listing. If you're an intermediary and you're posting deals on our platform, you'll get one of those each month and you'll keep those credits if you don't use them. So they'll build up throughout the year. <laughs> and then you get unlimited data, unlimited matching, Everything that we roll out, continue to roll out for BizNexus, and we're doing two major updates per month. Um, you get full access to that as an agency, um, as an agency client. Now, you, you don't panic if you're already using BizNexus and you're using the free version. You still get everything that you're using. You'll still enjoy today. We've just got a lot more bells and whistles that we've been putting out in the platform. That's going to continue, and you'll have full access to that as as an agency client going forward. So if you want to access either of those services, BizNexus, BN Digital, um, I think everyone on this call pretty much knows what those are, where to go. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here today. So today, we're going to be hanging out um, in this nurture and capture phase of the funnel. What I want to go through, um, this is going to be straight, straight from the questions that we, we got this past week. So last week, we did a pretty comprehensive run through um, overview of our funnel automation. And we just, we got peppered with questions. I knew that was going to happen because it's just, you're trying to throw too much into a lunch and learn. Again, we try to keep these quick, short, valuable. And if you dig into funnel automation, it's, it's dangerous to go down a, a rabbit hole. So um, I'm going to try to focus on a couple key points that, that people have been asking about this week. And then maybe depending on your feedback after this lunch and learn, we'll just pick nuggets out of the funnel automation that are valuable so that whether you're already on your own funnel or you're trying to get involved with it, or if you're coming on board as an, you know, as a client of, of us, fantastic. We'll, we'll do that for you, but we'll show you the strategies that you can employ specifically for deal origination, for, for M and a, for business acquisition and sale. Again, everything that we do is industry specific. Um, so we'll, I think today we'll, we'll pop into retargeting. I had a lot of questions on lead scoring, but I don't think I can fit both of those into one topic. So I will, I'll, I'll retouch on retargeting why I think that's so important for deal origination and how to 
implement that. And then um, we also got some, we had a lot of beginner questions, I think, on what should I post and how do I learn how to post the right thing as part of a, a nurturing process. We do have um, a lot of Lunch and Learns, web, um, the, the webinars on the, the full list on BN Digital uh, that, that cover this. So go back, check that out. There are longer sessions on exactly how to post, posting strategy, what type of content you should be posting, where to get the content. But generally speaking, if you're looking for inspiration, there are two, well, there's one easy way to do it. If you're in LinkedIn, and I have no idea who this is, uh, so if you're in this and you're watching, um, you know, sorry. But if you pop into somebody's profile, right, if you find somebody who's an influencer in your industry, if you find somebody who, um, you know, maybe is a great competitor, but they're doing something right and you want to catch up, go into their profile, go into Sales Navigator, and then you can save them to a list. So I'd recommend creating a list and say, you know, social posting models, right? What, whatever it is, you want to create the list. And then every time you go into your homepage in Sales Navigator, you're going to see updates from people on that list, right? And then if you actually engage with their posts, so, you know, if this gentleman had a post that I liked or I commented on, the algorithm is going to recognize that and they're going to start putting his post directly in your feed um, as, as you log into LinkedIn, right? So, and again, that's everything that we teach. That's, that's what you're doing on LinkedIn to make sure that your posts show in the feeds of the business owners or the referral networks who you're bringing into your LinkedIn network. Um, this, is, this is how it works, right? So once they start engaging with your content, your content is showing up at the top of their feed, regardless of, of when they posted it. Um, you know, that's, that's what's really special about LinkedIn today is the, uh, the life expectancy of a post. It can, it can last forever if it's getting views, if it's still getting any sort of engagement your LinkedIn posts will live out there on an ongoing basis. It's not like Facebook or Twitter where these posts simply die off and you know, who knows where they go, but in 24 hours, they're, they're gone. LinkedIn will stay there, right? So it's a great content investment. And if you're doing it the right way, you can make sure that your messaging is getting in front of, of those eyeballs, the appropriate eyeballs. So that's one way, build up a list, find, find a few people who you really like what they're doing and just I don't want to say copy, but model, watch closely and find your own voice, but use, use what they're doing for inspiration. That's a really, really great strategy. Um, another strategy um, you know, for, for us with our, our deal automation, um, whether you are you know, using our automation or you're on your own, hopefully you have something. We have um, what's called social listening. Right. And I'll, I'll try to walk you through an example of this. Hopefully this, this won't fail, but let's say, I don't know, I'm a Miami, I'm a Miami broker. All right. Um, and I can say, I, I want to check out my competitors, right. I want to I see what they're up to. So um, maybe I do a quick Google search. And again, this is all off the cuff guys. So hopefully this, this does have value here, but let's just say, Trying to identify who my main competitors are. Get a bunch of ads for where I am. Obviously, these aren't aren't relevant. But once you get down to the organic search results, you can see, okay, here are the here are the big the big dogs who are you know getting first page results for Miami broker. Let's let's see what they're doing with posting. And so you can check out whoever you know the top results are. Um, maybe they've got their social listed. Maybe you have to find it. Here we go. This is lucky. So I can just take their Twitter, for example. But if I want to see what they're doing on an ongoing basis, I can just um, hop into our funnel automation. And I'm basically just going to stalk my competitors. Um, it's creepy, but it's effective. And if you want to go in here and get their profile, you put that in and bam. And you can set up all of your competition in one tab. You can set up influencers in another. You can set up industry chatter in another. And then, you know, a couple times a week, just go through and, and see what they're posting, right? You're, you're going to stay up with your industry. You're going to stay up with your competitors, but you're also going to have a great feed of inspiration to help you with your social posting and help guide your social posting. You'll identify gaps, right? So if, if your competitors, especially if you're brick and mortar broker and, um, and the, there are so few intermediaries doing this well, 
doing you know, a, a content marketing game plan well, that if you look at your competition, you're going to identify gaps pretty quickly. So setting that up in some form or fashion is, is a great strategy. And those are two ways to, to quickly get up to speed with posting, again, with the intent to establish yourself as a qualified authority in your niche, in your geographic area. So if you're you know, sticking with that Miami business broker analogy, if you're selling businesses, if you're helping people buy businesses in Miami, you want to make sure that you are seen as that qualified authority in the area of business acquisition and sale within your geographic region. And all of your posts should help, contri should help contribute to that end. And ideally, you're um, following a, a, a disciplined social selling process so that when you're posting, the business owners, the financial advisors, the lawyers, the accountants who matter, right? Those end prospects, those are the eyeballs that those posts are getting in front of. So that's, that's that. Now, retargeting, we had a lot of questions on this. Um, again, my, my general issue with cold advertising is that we see a lot of people burn money, burn a lot of money on Facebook ads or need to be, you know, with brokers, they'll, they'll get a commission and they will more often than not just want to do everything digital. They, they know that they, they have the budget, they should be digital, but they just don't do it in a coordinated fashion. Don't go burning money on advertising um, cold, in my opinion. If, if you're following a process like ours, then you're sniping at scale, right? So you're, you're identifying exactly who those business owners are and you're bringing them into your ecosystem at scale. Same thing with the referral prospects. Then down the road, right? So ideally, regardless of how you're doing it, you should be keeping track of these prospects, who they are. So the business owners are business owners. If they're HVAC business owners, they're HVAC business owners. If they're Miami financial advisors, they're Miami financial advisors. Now with a funnel automation system like ours, that's automatically tracked. We're just putting a bullseye on, on each persona. So we're, we're tagging each prospect type. You need to do the same, whether you're on board with us or using your own system. Once you're doing that, then ideally you're set up for retargeting. Whenever you decide to advertise in the future, you'll have that option, but you need to tag each lead as a specific type. And then you need to set up key assets for retargeting. So what do I mean by, by key assets? One could be the persona, right? So for us, um, going back to our, um, you know, our funnel automation, if you go into, you know, personas for us, we really like personas. So when people come into our funnel, um, we're going to tag them, right? So if they're a business owner, if they're a buyer, if they're a lender, their financial advisor, if they're a specific type of business owner, they're getting tagged as a persona. Right. So later down the road, if I want to show ads just to every user who's been tagged as HVAC owner Harry, um, owner Harry, then then I can easily do that. Um, what we also really like is trackable media assets. Right. So if you have, I'm not even going to go through it with our with our funnel because I don't want this to be a sales pitch. So I'll just talk about it. But um, you know, if you have a white page. Right. If you have something that, that you've written, ideally you have a way to upload that and have a trackable URL. Right. Same thing with your landing pages. You know, if if you have landing pages, so if you have a specific page with a giveaway, like an ebook, the page is dedicated to selling a business. Then you have another landing page to uh, dedicated to buying a business and one for business valuation. All of those should be tracked. They should be pixeled, set up for retargeting. Um, you know, if you have a URL, so if you just have a URL that you're sharing in a drip, right? So say you have an email campaign or you're sending someone a link on LinkedIn, or you're putting a link on, on your LinkedIn profile, ideally you have a trackable link so that when somebody clicks on that link, they're retargeted. So let me use the, the use case there. If you have a LinkedIn profile and you have articles, or if you have anything that you're sharing, or if it's on your, your profile, if you use a trackable link, then you can retarget anybody who clicks on the link, right? So that's, that's highly valuable. So if I'm you know, sharing an article on um, the benefits of selling a business and I put that in as a trackable link, then anybody who clicks through to that, whether that's, that's my website or not, if, if I use a trackable link, anybody who clicks through, once they're coming to my ecosystem, I can identify that. I can have that, that information in my funnel automation and I can retarget ads directly to that, to that prospect. Very, very valuable and cheap, right? So this is something that 
if you're doing list-based retargeting, generally speaking, um, for a list of a thousand ish people, you'll want a hundred, hundred bucks a week on average as a, as a budget. That's a, it's a sweeping generalization depending on your market, where you are, but, um, that's, you know, it's a, a, a good kind of rule of thumb. And then if you're retargeting a media asset or, you know, web page, it can be, it can be much, much cheaper, but setting this up and showing ads only to those people, right. For the retargeting, um, that's, that's highly valuable. Um, the, the last thing that we like to retarget is, um, social interaction. So, um, you know, if somebody has been interacting with your social accounts, you can monitor that and you can see who's been interacting with your social accounts and you can retarget them. So you can just show ads to the people who've been interacting with um, some of your social accounts. So hopefully that kind of gets down to it. I, I think retargeting, you know, like if you, if you see an ad for a pair of shoes that you've been looking at for Christmas and then you see that same ad uh, or you see the same pair of shoes on a website you know, that you're surfing the next day and then a week later you see the same pair of shoes and they've been marked 50% off, you've been pixeled, you've been retargeted. This is something that is very, very common in every other industry, but in deal origination, since we know that 95% of the people who we approach at first pass are not going to be ready to have a conversation about exit planning or about business valuation, they don't know who you are, um, you need to take time to show them how your solutions fit their pain points, to show them social proof, to prove to them that you are you know, someone who is an authority in the area of business acquisition and sale. If you're retargeting people in deal origination in this process, because it's such a long sales cycle, it's a very, very, very effective way of just staying in front of these prospects who you've already, already identified fit the bill um, over the long term. So if you have any questions, just reach out to me directly. I'm happy to just hop on a call and do a free consult for how retargeting can be applied um, to your particular strategy, but it is something that everybody should have in place in my opinion. So with that, I'll just leave it open for the questions, if any. You guys have been really active with the, the feedback and the questions for the link that comes after this webinar. So I really appreciate that because again, um, we, we shape these things according to your feedback, right? We're, we're listening and we're talking about where we see issues, where we see things going wrong, Sure, we'll talk about the new stuff that we roll out because we're excited about it, but really it's all, it's all based on, on your feedback and your questions. So I don't see any coming in right now, but I'm sure we'll see some coming through on the feedback. So please submit that. And we will be here next week. Um, and I'll probably pop into lead scoring a bit and, and how to set up automated tasks in a funnel so that you can you know, get the notification to call somebody who's been looking at your seller business page four or five times, et cetera. Um, but anyways, have a great week, stay safe and we'll catch you next Wednesday. Thanks guys.